These sewers don't stink. I'm talking about Undercity Sewers from Murders at Markov Manor, and today we're playing it in the Epic Storm. Let's go see the deck list. The decklist that we'll be playing today is sort of an extension of the Epic Storm version 15.6. I know that I recently uploaded a video of Whale of the Forgotten that maybe didn't pan out so well. You can find that in the card above. But today, we're trying something a little bit different. We're playing Undercity Sewers for Murders at Markov Manor, which really impressed me when I played Modern recently. And I think that the Surveil Lands could be multi-format staples, and today I'm trying to push the limits and see if it, we can get away with it in Legacy Storm. So if you're unfamiliar with this brand new land, why don't we just read it for you? So, like a temple, and the temples were lands that come into play tapped that tap for two colors, in this case, blue and black, and then when it enters, Temple scry one, surveil land, surveil one. So scry goes to the bottom of the deck, surveil goes right to the graveyard. So that is how they're different. But also, there's a kicker. Temples did not have basic land types. Undercity sewers and the other surveil lands do. They're both islands and swamps, which means that you can search for them using misty rainforest and bloodstained mire. So you might be wondering, well, it looks like there's some other changes. Why? So the thought process here behind Undercity Sewers is that those lands are really better when you have no turn one plays. So you want to reduce the amount of turn one plays in your deck to maximize them. Or you only play one or two and you fetch for them under ideal circumstances. So Mitra's Bobble doesn't require you to use a mana on the first turn, unlike Ponder. So today we're playing Mishra's Bobble, which allows us to go back up to three copies of Mox Opal and down a copy of Chrome Mox. And by having Mishra's Bobble, your Mox Opals are more reliable, your Galvanic Relays are better because you have more zeros in your deck, and Song of Creation is more reliable. So Mishra's Bobble is just better in the Epic Storm, not to mention the fact that it's easier to get Threshold for Cabal Ritual and Undercity Sewers can also help you get Threshold for Cabal Ritual, so it makes sense. And previously we used to play Mishra's Bobble, but Ponder was just so much better at finding Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, and Beseech the Mirror. But now you have Undercity Sewers to help find those things alongside your Mishra's Bobbles. And I think that's going to go a long way. That's my hypothesis at least. I do have another list that's a little more stock. Uh, looks like it didn't save my change, unfortunately. It's this very deck list that's just 15.6, and then minus the Underground Sea plus the Undercity Sewers. I'm sorry it didn't change, uh, or it didn't save this change, but that is the other list. The list in front of you is what I'm interested in testing today, just because it's a little bit different, and you could make that small change, or you could try a bigger change and see the more of an impact, and that's what I'm really looking to do. And I can always walk it back to that previous list with Ponders and just add in the Surveil Land. But I think it's worth exploring something a little bit different that could be, you know, just better for the deck. So that's what we're doing today. And um, really, it's just the ability to play a zero on turn one, leverage that Mishra's Bobble plus Fetch Land trigger, and then grabbing your Surveil Land, I think will be quite good. So that's what we're doing today. I realize that... Uh, I've become a little long-winded, so we're going to head on into the first match. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it, really, and I hope you enjoy the matches in this league. I'll see you there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsworm.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsworm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to match number one, or should I say match number six? So I re actually recorded this deck list once already today, and I, you know, took down my streaming setup. I was getting ready to relax for the night, and then I went to go edit the video. Well, I muted myself in match number four because my opponent was taking a little long and I wanted to grab a drink. When I came back, I thought I muted, I didn't. So from the beginning of match number four, a couple minutes in till the end of the video, it was just all muted. So I decided rather than upload bad content, I would re-record the league. In that league, the Undercity Sewer was quite good and so were the Measures Bobbles. So I'm interested to see how they go in this league. We're on the draw against an unknown opponent. I have no idea what they're playing, 
but I don't like the fact that we have Guy's Will on our hand, and our hand doesn't really do anything, so I'm going to take a mulligan. This seems pretty good. So I will bottom the Chrome Mox and see uh, how this goes. The Leyline of the Guild Pact. Okay. I'm guessing something with Leyline Binding. They suspended Crashing Footfall, so they're playing five color Rhinos in Legacy. They have two cards left in their hand. We draw another Burning Wish. We will Surveil. I think I want Brainstorm. We'll play Mishra's Bobble. Pass the turn. The Rhinos loses a counter. They have two cards. I could have bobbled, but they had a fetch land. And I I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to just like force them to use it. But they play a land. They have another guild packed on top. Now we'll draw off the bobble. Brainstorm. And then Lion's Eye Diamond. Let's play the Brainstorm. We did not hit. That's actually really awkward. Okay, two cards on top. Pass the turn. I don't love that. They're fetching away the ley line of the guild pact. They have a land. They're fetching Elvish Spirit Guide. Okay. So we're drawing a known blank here. I'm going to Thought Seize. And it's a land. Okay. So our next draw is a Cabal Ritual that we can't use. So we have at least one live draw before we're dead. I'll play out the Mox Opal. Pass the turn. So the Rhino should be coming off Suspend here. They're fetching. They go to 17. Sign of Draco. That's actually lethal. I'm not going to be able to beat this. Oh, wow. I drew Beseech the Mirror. For some reason, I thought I was drawing the Cabal Ritual this turn. I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, let's see if what their one card in hand is. Dark Ritual. How about a Cabal Ritual? And they're going to Leyline Binding our Mox Opal. So that means that we should be able to win this game. Okay, Lines of Diamond. Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing the diamond. What's funny about this is that on the way back, the Mishra's Bobble is going to be our bargain card. Easy does it. Boom. All right, we've stolen game number one from Five Color Rhinos. Love that. Okay, so I traditionally I don't like Carpet in this matchup, but seeing how our opponent's deck is constructed, I am more likely to like it. Um... I'm less excited about Pesaju, but if they decide to like cascade into a hate piece, the hate piece I've usually seen is Collector Roof, but if it's something else, Pesaju is pretty good. So I think we just board like we would against a typical blue deck. We take out one of each mox and then one of each Cabal Ritual. If you're interested, there is a cyborg guide available at our Patreon. Uh, that would be the Ep or patreon.com slash the Epic Storm. You could also get it in our Discord. There's now a shop in there. You can also find it at the Epic slash shop. And uh, if you scroll down on this very YouTube video, there's tons of places to pick up the cyborg guide if you're interested. But it's for the Epic Storm version 15.6, not this list, because this list is experimental and it might change. This seems fine to me. We will keep. So the Surveil Land did not come up in game number one. Well, I guess it did. I did play it. My bad. Okay. We'll fetch. Grab Taiga. No, let's grab Bayou. And I'm just going to suspend Guy as well. It might seem crazy because you're like, no, you should brainstorm that back and then try to beseech into it or whatever. But... Okay, well, it turns out they had a turbo draw. I was expecting these uh, five color lists to be a little bit slower. Not the case here. Okay, so that makes me a little bit less excited about Carpet of Flowers. So they still have three cards in hand. They're attacking for four. I'll fall to 11. Uh-oh. All right, so this guy's will plan not really working out. We find Beseech the Mirror. Okay. I'm going to pedal Brainstorm. They have three cards in their hand. So I could, in theory, go for it here, but I lose to any interaction. Alternatively, I could try to Veil of Summer and bait out a Counterspell and then go for it next turn. I think I'm just going to jam. Dark Ritual. So they could have something like Endurance. I'm wondering if I should try Song of Creation. So it's like Force of Vigor versus Endurance here. I think I'm going to choose to play around Endurance. Grab Song of Creation. It resolves, I will play Lion's Eye Diamond, trigger the Song of Creation. Well, those were two very good draws. Let's try a Lotus Petal. Okay, two Bobbles, looking pretty good. Mox Opal, Storm 9. 
Theirs are under city sewers, but I don't need to play that quite yet. Two protection spells. Let's play another Lion's Eye Diamond. When you have the bobbles in your deck, your songs are just so much more powerful. Okay, we're sort of off to the races here. And our opponent just concedes. Love that for us. All right, we are one and all in this Legacy League. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two, we're on the play, and we're facing someone who plays a lot of Arclight Phoenix combo. So I think I'm going to disrespect them having Force of Will, and we're going to try to put a powerful spell on the stack in turn one. Underground Sea. Dark Ritual. What about a Cabal Ritual? Lion's Eye Diamond. Chrome Mox, Storm 4. So I have eight mana here, which is not enough mana to peer into the Abyss, so we're going to Echo of Aeons. Tap for red and burning wish floating three block. Storm six. It resolves. Let's expand the sideboard just a hair. We'll grab the echo. Add three blue. And it's important to remember we only have brainstorm in our deck now, so leaving one blue floating is just fine. It resolves. And no red mana. So we have to pass the turn here. We'll play a bobble. And let's play a, a Lion's Eye Diamond so I don't lose Metalcraft, but also Cabal Therapy if they are on Phoenix. Passing the turn, not ideal. In their upkeep, we'll look at their top card. Marsh Flats. Okay. Marsh Flats was not in their last Phoenix list. So it looks like they're just on Reanimator. They take my Burning Wish. We'll draw off of the Mishra's Bobble. Another land. Boo! So this looks like a great spot for our Undercity Sewers to potentially find an action spell. No Entomb from Reanimator. They play the Known Marsh Flats. On the end step, we'll fetch. Grab the Undercity Sewers. Surveil one. Mishra's Bobble. I'm going to bin the Bobble. So I could take it and then get the Pseudo Scry with my Bloodstained Mire, which might be good. But it also just feels like it takes forever. I'll play the Bloodstained Mire past the turn. Now I'm regretting not taking the Mishra's Bobble. They play a Basic Swamp. We'll draw another Cabal Ritual. Okay, pass. Mana is not a problem for us at this point. Scrubland. Okay. They're tapping three mana. Four mana for another Shield Dread. So they're on multiple main deck copies of Shield Dread, whatever they're playing. We'll lose two here. It's a Lotus Petal. Pass the turn. This might not be Reanimator. I mean, it could be, don't get me wrong. But this might actually not be Reanimator. I know that Unmask is a Reanimator card, but I'm not convinced yet. Dark Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond, definitely not a Reanimator card. This might be like 10 fins. Shallow Grave, in response, they discard their hand. Echo of Aeons and Gristlebrand. Yeah, this is 10 fins. And we've just lost the game. Okay, we can go to the next. So basically with Shield Dread and Gristlebrand, they can just draw their deck. So that's why we've lost. Uh, we can go to the next one. We definitely want Thoughtseize. We don't need Galvanic Relay. Echoing Truth seems like a fine card to board in. Let's try this out. Game number two on the play. Sure, we'll keep. Very good hand. Lead on Underground Sea. Let's play a Lotus Petal. I don't know if our opponent is a Force of Will deck or not. We did see Unmask, but you never know. And let's Thought Seize them. Orms Chant, what? Ay -y -y -y. Double Orms Chant. Very hateful. So I could try to Echo here, but I'd be Echoing with no mana while refilling their hand. I don't know how I feel about that. I wish I could empty. Well, Burning Wish, yes. Grab the Echo. I think I'm supposed to just cast it. Storm 6, any order. By the way, this temporary zone only shows up if your opponent is playing a card that cares about that. So, in this case, that would be the Shallow Grave. So it gives you a little bit of extra information. 
We'll look at their top card. Fluster Storm. So they do have counter spells. So they have Fluster Storm and Orm's Chant. On top of just being like a turbo fast combo deck with Unmask. So it seems like our opponent just has a lot of interaction for us. We'll draw off the Mishra's Bobble. It's the guy's will that we don't want. And another Bobble. Brainstorm. We'll put back the extra Mox Oval and Guy's Will. Actually, let's play the Bobble. Fetch now. Grab Taiga. And I'll just pass. And their upkeep will Bobble. Marsh Flats. So we know that they have Marsh Flats Fluster Storm. We'll draw a card off Mishra's Bobble. It's another Bobble. Let's attempt a Brainstorm. So I know that I don't want this Tendrils. So I think I'm going to mill it using the Undercity Sewers here. Surveil looking pretty good. We will bin the Tendrils. Play the Bobble. Pass the turn. In their upkeep, let's look at their top card. Shield Red. Lovely. They fetch it away. Thank you. Looks like they're passing through combat. We'll draw off the Bobble. It's going to be the Known Veil vale of Summer. We'll play the Volcanic and Lotus Petal. By playing out Petal here, it gives me access to Double Veil of Summer if there's a counter war. And our opponent's hand just does nothing. Discard Fluster Storm. We will Burning Wish Repair into the Abyss. Pass. They had one draw step, or have one draw step, before I try to win the game. And they concede. Nice. We're going to game number three. I don't see any need to change. I'm just going to resubmit. Game number three, our opening hand is pretty solid. We'll try it out. Our opponent has taken a mulligan to five. Let's see what they have in store. Polluted Delta. They fetch for a scrub land. And they thought seize. I would not be surprised if they take my thought seize after getting scrub land because they'd be trying to protect their orms chant. Mox Opal. Okay. We'll play the Misty. Play Bobble. Lotus Petal, Opal. Hmm, I actually think I did this too fast. I think maybe I was supposed to play the Bayou instead of the Misty. All right, we'll float red. Bobble myself. We don't want another Opal. We'll fetch. Burning Wish. We'll go grab Echo. Pass the turn. We'll draw off the Mishra's Bobble. Thought sees on themselves. So they're looking to draw land into Gristlebrand. That's very scary. We draw another Chrome Mox. If they draw the land here, I don't think I can win. I have to pass. I, I mean, I literally can't cast the Echo. Did they draw the land? It would appear not. So I could cast Echo now the hard way. We'll fetch player Chrome Mox imprint Veil of Summer. Play another Chrome Mox just for Metalcraft purposes. And let's hard cast this Echo, Storm 3. Play Lotus Petal, and here's the Orms Chant. Oh, play Lion's Eye Diamond, and let's Thought Seize. And they did have the Orms Chant. Let's take it. Pass the turn. So they could Entomb for Unburial Rites, and then bring back the Shield Red. They Thought Seize. So the Entomb Unburial Rites line is gone, unless they drew Dark Ritual, or another Lion's Eye Diamond. They take my Brainstorm. Redraw another land. I'll play Bloodstained Mire. Cabal Ritual. We'll add three blue. Spin the wheel on Echo. Storm 2. Song of Creation. Whoops, I guess I can't cast it that way. Uh, we'll tap the Opal. Song of Creation. Wow, we beat 10 fins. Let's go. Four Orms Chant plus Philosopher Storm, and we beat 10 fins. I love that. We're 2-0. There's still three matches left to go, but I'm feeling pretty good about this. I know that I'll see you in the third match. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Match number three, we're on the draw. 
I don't know what our opponent's playing. I'm going to try it out. Ancient Tomb, Simeon Spirit Guide, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, sure. Come on, deck. Brainstorm. We will Thought Seize. Oh, double Archon of Amiria. How about that? That's not obnoxious. Uh, Lotus Petal. Mox Opal. Pass the turn. All right, so we are not out of this. I do have Burning Wish for consigning to Oblivion as a way to win, but I don't know if we'll get there in time. They discard a Solitude. And there's the Archon of Amiria. Yeah. So my best draw right now is like a, another Lotus Petal. I mean, I would also take a Lion's Eye Diamond. Chrome Mox is actually not bad. We'll play that in printing the Brainstorm. And then we have to pass. So next turn, I can Burning Wish for a Consign and Fetch. Oh, they have Reflection of Kiki Jiki. I might not be able to win this because they could copy the Archon. Yeah, I'm too slow this game. Yep. I go to 12. Yeah, I'm just too slow. Burning Wish. Grab the Consign to Oblivion, which in theory, if I had another turn, we'd be fine. But our opponent opened up on turn one, you know, two drop that makes mana into Archon, into Caves of Chaos Adventure, and I'm just dead. Sometimes initiative is gonna initiative. And they put it on the Caves of Chaos Adventure. And now they're going to attacks. So this is 11. And they reveal fourth Aerolingas. I'm at one life. So all they have to do now is copy their Archon and I can't win. They copy the Caves of Ca I guess that just kills me. So that works too. Yep. Okay. We will bring in more copies of Thoughtseize, the Besejus, Echoing Truth, and... Do you want the Consign? Could also try boarding in the empty, but then that makes Burning Wish worse. I'll try leaving in one Veil of Summer for Chalice of the Void. Let's try this. On the play. No. I mean, I guess you... Okay, maybe this is fine. So, it seems a little sketchy. That's because it is. But you can discard an Archon. You can blow up a Chalice. You have a couple draws to look for a hit. Alright, I've talked myself into it. We'll play out Mishra's Bobble. Let's look at their top card. Chalice of the Void. Perfect. We will Thought Seize. We will take Archon of Emeria. Play out Lotus Petal. Play out Lotus Petal. Pass the turn. We draw off the Bobble and it's a Brainstorm. The downside is our opponent has double Chalice of the Void. They play a Lotus Petal. Chal Zero. And now a Chalice of the Void on one. Interesting that they played the City and not the Ancient Tomb. Play Volcanic, we'll pass the turn. Cavern of Souls, the city will sacrifice, and they're passing. On their end step, I'm going to use Beseju, but maybe I should tap for the right color mana. And we will kill the Chalice of the Void on one. We drew a diamond that we can't really play due to the Chal Zero, so it's a card I'm interested in putting back off this Brainstorm. I think I'm going to keep the other Brainstorm and I'll play the Mire past the turn. On the end step, I'll probably grab the Undercity Sewers. Season Dungeoneer. Yep. We will fetch. Grab that Undercity Sewers. Surveil. Lotus Petal can go to the graveyard. We, there's a Chalice of the Void on zero in play. Taiga. Let's Brainstorm. Interesting. So, Brainstorm will be the seventh card to the graveyard. We also have this Lotus Petal, but that means that we have Threshold. If I put back... Tendril's Diamond. In theory, I could go get Peer into the Abyss and try to win with Peer next turn. But I'd have to dodge a full turn's worth of hate. You could also empty, but I don't think empty's even really good here. So... I think we're supposed to Burning Wish it for Peer into the Abyss and pass. Because, like, empty for eight goblins probably isn't going to erase the initiative. Okay. We'll grab Peer. Pass the turn. So they get a draw step here and the explore off of Season Dungeoneer. Oh, and they get to scry too. That's scary. They kept one on top. And it's Archon of Emeria. Oh, no way. And then they flip Magus of the Moon. That was devastating. We're dead. So we got through 
double chalice archon of Emeria, but then they found a second archon. Yep. I'm at six life, and now they can play the Magus. That'll do. So we are now two and one, losing to the initiative. That said, our land still looked pretty good in this matchup. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Match number four, we're on the play, and the last time I faced this account was the year 2020. And every result I have against this person, they were on Miracles. I'm willing to bet that they're on a control deck. Here we have a hand with double Beseech, which is a little risky versus control. But we do get to use a Surveil Land. I think I'll try this. Play the Misty Pass. Okay, well they're not on control, they're on what appears to be 8 cast. Sure. They play a Lotus Petal, they do have Metalcraft. Four cards in hand. Another Mox Opal. And a Chalice of the Void on one. So they have five power on the first turn plus Chalice of the Void. Not bad. We will search our deck for our Undercity Sewers. Surveil 1. Cabal Ritual is actually a perfect card here. We will keep that. So if our opponent's last two cards are Forcible Blue card, you got me. Like, you wanted this game way more than I did. So we will keep this. Fetch for Volcanic. We'll lead on the Cabal Ritual. Because if they want to force something, I'd rather they force this. We're going to attempt to win through Chalice of the Void on one here. Play out that Lion's Eye Diamond. Hold Control. Bargain Beseech the Mirror. Yeah, okay, well, it just happened again. It wants me to, it looks like they had Force. Wow! What an opening hand! Holy moly. An insane 7. 5 power, Chalice of the Void on one Force Will Blue card. Yikes. I don't think we're going to be able to come back from this. I mean, my best draw is Cabal Ritual, but like Cabal Ritual doesn't have Threshold either. Maybe I made a mistake searching out Volcanic Island, but I think I'm going to be dead before it's relevant. Yeah. Sometimes they just want it more than you. And they have an Emery. I don't think the Emery actually matters that much here. I don't think I have an out. Like Burning Wish into an Echo into a win, but that seems unlikely. They got me. Okay. We'll bring in Beseju, Thoughtseize. I don't think Echoing Truth is actually any good in this matchup, so I'm not going to side it in. And this is a crazy person thing, but I think you're actually supposed to board out Brainstorm versus these decks. Like, you don't really want to take time off to Brainstorm. Like, it just doesn't align well in the matchup. And you don't have to agree with me. That's okay. I've been playing this deck a lot. I've played this matchup a lot. And I don't think Brainstorm is where you want to be. Also, Carpet of Flowers is not good. I've asked, or I've had a lot of people ask me, like, Bryant, throw a blue deck board in Carpet. No. Carpet is really for fair blue decks. Like, I don't even board in Carpet of Flowers versus Doomsday or Show and Tell. Like, Carpet is for matchups that go long. And they have a lot of islands. Eight cast, not, like, they have Ancient Tomb, they have Artifact Lands, they have Urza Saga. Like, it's just not good there. And versus... Sneak and Show and Doomsday, it's a card where you want to go long and hit a lot of land drops. And a lot of, a lot of the times in those matchups, like, there's just not a lot of turns. Uh, I guess so? I mean, it's not a hand I love. Going with the Mulligan to six. Misty Rainforest. I'm going to search out Bayou and play Thoughtseize. I think I might actually suspend this guy's will. Silent Gravestone's a weird one. But they have Canonist, so if there is a Game 3, I might actually board in my Echoing Truths. We'll take the Canonist. Pass the turn. They play Urza's Saga. Silent Gravestone. Sure. Sage is not a bad draw. I could suspend the guy as well. Question is, do I think we're going to get 4 plus turns when they're going to double Ancient Tomb into Constructs? I don't think so. I'm going to pass. Saga goes to the second chapter, and it looks like they're going to pass. They have four cards. They're choosing not to play the Mishra's Bobble, so they're holding it for the Automaton, but I don't know. The other Besaju. I guess we'll play one of them. And I think I'm actually supposed to blow up the Saga here, because it stops another Construct, and they don't get to go get an Artifact out of their deck. Pass the turn. Spire of Industry. They play the Mishra's Bobble. 
out of order with the patchwork automaton. Wonder if that was intentional or not. We'll take four. I go to 13. They have two cards left. They play a thought cast. Also interesting they didn't tap the island for that. I have to pass the turn. They do not use Mishra's Bobble, so that means that they're pretty comfortable. Like, they likely have a counter spell. They have seven damage coming in here. My best draw by far is Beseech the Mirror. Okay, here goes nothing. And it's a Beseech. Mox Opal. Dark Ritual. Cabal Ritual. Beseech the Mirror with Bargain, sacrificing Mox Opal. Metallic Rebuke. I will play Veil of Summer. Term six. And it looks like I'm one storm short of winning with Tendrils. I mean, I didn't know that we were going to be in this spot or else I would have played out the diamond, but I kept it for Song of Creation. I can't get Guy's Will because it's in my hand. Can't relay. I think it just has to be the song. Storm 7. My first land is going to be Undercity Sewers, so that way I can surveil and get rid of something if I can't cast it. Okay, surveil land. I think that has to go to the graveyard. Lion's Eye Diamond. No! Oh, brutal. Ugh. Okay. We have lost. We're now 2-2 two two with one match left to go. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Not the way I wanted this league to go, but we're going to try to, you know, keep our head up and win match number five. We're facing someone who's played a lot of Is It Delver. This hand seems good enough to me. We'll try this. Play the Bloodstained Mire, pass the turn. Fluted Delta. Bray Volcanic into Channeler. Yep. I will then grab Undercity Sewers and Surveil. I think I want land number two. Let's attempt a brainstorm here, and if they want to daze me, that's just fine. Their resolves will put back tendrils and chromox. Play this bloodstain mire. Fetch. I think I want volcanic here. And I'll bobble. Unholy heat. That's one that I like to see on top of the deck. Very good. We'll draw off the bobble. Mox opal. We're looking for a payoff spell at this point. Brainstorm. It looks like maybe our opponent missed their second land drop here, unless they're just choosing to play it in the second main phase. And they do. We draw Tendrils again. Okay. I think I'm going to sit pretty. So we might be able to uh, rope-a-dope them by just building up uh, to eight cards, casting a Brainstorm, a Veil of Summer, casting some more spells, and then Tendrils from hand. They play a Ponder. They kept the card off Ponder. They have Hit Surveil. I go to 14. Wasteland. So I think Wasteland might actually change the, the math a little bit here. Okay, I've been wasted. Beseech. Yeah, let's play the Brainstorm. Spell Pierce. I realize that I'm playing into Days, but I'm going to cast it anyway. Because I don't have mana coming up to play through Days anyway. With this Cabal Ritual. And they do, in fact, have days. Okay. My brainstorm has hit, been hit by Spell Pierce, and we have to pass. You might have been thinking, like, Bryant, why not brainstorm when they wastelanded your Undercity Sewers? I don't think that's actually a good play. Like, yes, in hindsight, when everything that just happens happens, it looks really smart. But when you do that in your upkeep, you're redrawing one of the cards immediately that you just put back off brainstorm. Or if you play it in your main phase, you get to look deeper into your deck and see more cards. So waiting just makes a lot of sense. It just happens that our opponent had Spell Pierce, and sometimes that happens. Ooh, Wasteland. That's brutal. They have been finding their good cards, that's for sure. They destroyed the Bayou. Okay, we could try to go here, but we'd be disrespecting Force of Will. Alright, Cabal Ritual. Beseech. Sacking Opal. Yeah, now my Veil play looks bad. Okay, so the Veil play, the, the playing Veil might have been bad. Uh, because we would have been able to play through days here. That might be my own fault. Let's go to game number two. We're not coming back from this. I might have been a little too jumpy on the Veil of Summer. We'll board out Cabal Rituals. 
and then one of each mox. Okay, Brian, be more patient. Okay, game number two. This seems fine. We will keep. Yeah, I feel like I cost myself that first game by being too aggressive. That's not like me. But, you know, another game. We'll put the guys will to the graveyard. We can always echo it back later. I don't really want to draw that card. And if they wasteland me here, you can't rely on casting Brainstorm to get rid of it. So, like, it really should just go to the graveyard. Misty Rainforest into Dragon's Rage Channeler. Another Burning Wish was not great. I don't think that this is a spot where I can afford my Brainstorm to be countered, so I'm going to just play it now. We'll put two Burning Wishes on top of the deck. Pass the turn. Our opponent plays a Ponder and a Polluted Delta. Sure. So we're going to redraw Burning Wish. Let's grab Volcanic. And let's play the Burning Wish. Resolves. Grab Thoughtseize. Pass the turn. Our opponent fetches and grabs another Volcanic Island, then plays Ponder. They surveil away Pyroblast. Sure. And they did not shuffle. Flooded Strand. They swing, it'll go to 17. I'm fine with that. Carpet of Flowers. That's a good one. Okay, let's start with a Thoughtseize. They brainstorm in response. They get that Surveil trigger. Gets rid of a Delver. Thoughtseize back on the stack. Counterbalance, Force of Will, Force of Will. Meltdown, Pyroblast, Bolt. Well, we will take the Counterbalance. Play Carpet of Flowers. We'll now make some red mana. Oh, I actually hit green. That's fine. Play the Lion's Eye Diamond. I know that they're likely going to melt down it away, but I think the card off of Galvanic Relay is probably better than this Lion's Eye Diamond. First card was Dark Ritual. The Burning Wish was the first Burning Wish I played this game to get the Thought Seize. Another Dark Ritual. From Mox. And another Lion's Eye Diamond. Sure. They do not Lightning Bolt me on the end step. They fetch in their upkeep, they go to draw, so they're seeing a fresh card here. And they could have bolted me in their upkeep, and then gotten a sculpted draw, but instead they chose not to. They besage you who endures. Let's make some red mana, I guess. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. Throw Mox, Storm 4. We will not imprint. Play Burning Wish. Storm is 5. Grab Thought Seize. We will Thought Seize them. They drew a Daze. I'll discard the Daze, I guess. It doesn't really matter. Beseech the Mirror. Sacrificing Chrome Mox. Storm 7. They Force. I will Veil of Summer. We draw another Beseech. And at this point, I just grab Tendrils of Agony and cast it. Okay. Tendrils, and we're off to game number three. Oh, uh, I love Galvanic Relay. It's so good. Okay, let's play tight again and just win this, finish with a positive record. Game number three, we're on the draw. This hand's a little bit risky because I'm really relying on this brainstorm resulting, but I'm going to keep it. Polluted Delta or Volcanic Island Ponder. They did not shuffle. We draw another Burning Wish. So our draws so far have been pretty clunky. I don't know why I said so far. I mean, it was one draw, but drawing another Burning Wish was not what I wanted. Now we see a Wasteland. Veil of Summer's fine. Let's cast this Brainstorm while they don't have Pyroblast available. That was actually pretty good. So we'll put back one of each tutor. Play a Lotus Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Mox Opal, Storm 4. And now we can Galvanic Relay. Five cards coming off the top. Brainstorm, Thought Seize, Dark Ritual, Burning Wish, Mishra's Bobble. They flip the Delver to Brainstorm. They attack, I go to 16, and they play the Brainstorm. Ah, uh, second Wasteland. No way, that's so brutal. Okay, and we didn't find a land off that relay. Tendrils is a terrible draw. We'll play Mishra's Bobble. I don't even know what the play is here. Maybe it's Brainstorm? It's gotta be Brainstorm. Second Wasteland was really tough. It resolves. Okay. Carpet of Flowers, Tendrils. I mean, I don't want the Tendrils. That can go back. All right, so I'm going to fetch. We'll grab Bayou. Play Dark Ritual. This seems like a juicy force target. And they do force the ritual. All right, uh, I feel fine. I'm going to pass here. 
I don't think I'm supposed to use the bobble because I need the metal craft off Mox Opal. Delver attacks for three, I'll go to 12. And they're passing. Besaju, who endures? Play Besaju. Play Carpet. Go to our second main phase. Make a green. Let's Veil of Summer. That is resolved. Dark Ritual, Storm 3. Beseech the Mirror with Bargain, sacrificing Mishra's Bobble, Storm 4. So if I were to chain Beseeches, I could play three more going up to seven. Did they just give me lethal? I think they might have just given me lethal. Um, yeah. So plus three more Beseeches would be eight, Tendrils would be nine, and they're at 18. Yeah, let's do it. Sacrifice Mox Opal. Thank you for casting Brainstorm. Sacrifice this Lion's Eye Diamond. We will now sacrifice the carpet and tendrils of agony. Thank you. Sweet. All right, so it was only a 3-2. My first league today was also a 3-2, unfortunately. But um, sometimes that's the way it goes. So my thoughts. I still love the Surveil Land. Undercity Sewers has been so good. I would actually be interested in testing a second Surveil Land. I don't know what it would look like. Um, I think the mana base is going to be changing soon. I don't know if it will end up being permanent, but I want to explore. I think there's a lot of room for growth with testing out multiple surveil lands, which makes our Mishra's Bobbles even better. In this league, we saw how good Bobble was at supporting Mox Opal. In the current 15.6, I feel like Mox Opal might be the worst card in the deck because it's just not a reliable card, where now... Mox Opal is a pretty good card in our deck once again. But what didn't happen this league was Mishra's Bobble really allowing Song of Creation to go nuts, where that happened twice in my first league, where Mishra's Bobble instead of Ponder literally won me matches. That didn't happen. Instead, this time my Song of Creation bricked. So you can't win them all, but I don't know. I really do think that there might be something here and something worth exploring. I don't know what the final mana base will look like. You could in theory, go back to playing a red-black land, but I don't know if that's necessary. Maybe if you go up to two surveil lands, it could be right. I'm still trying to figure it all out, but I think now's a really exciting time to be playing this archetype because I think that these surveil lands are major upgrades. You could also look at a 13th land in the main deck, but I don't think I'm a fan of that. I think that the surveil lands are actually a reason to play fewer lands rather than more. I think that it solidifies playing 12 at least in my opinion. But that's all I've got for today. Thank you for watching. I really, really hope that you liked the video. Let me know in the comment section down below. But whew, all right, that's it. No more rambling. Have a great day and keep storming. You know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. And if you enjoyed the deck list in today's video, go to the comment section, check out that pinned comment where you will find two links. One for TCG player, so you can buy the deck. And the other is so that you can rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Card Hoarder is the best rental service for Magic Online. They truly make playing online extremely affordable. Go check out Card Hoarder today.